Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm joined today by G2 Patel, Cisco's president and chief product officer. Uh, G2, it's been a while since we caught up. How you been? How are you, man? It's good to see you, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you more uh, next week at Cisco Live. Cisco, it seems like the pace of innovation is really ramped up. You've had so much going on. There was NVIDIA announcements, OpenAI. You've got lots of partnerships. Uh, is it just me, or have you actually ramped up the pace of innovation at that company? So you see, remember about a year ago, I think, nine months ago, I had said in a year this is going to look like a different company, and two years will be unrecognizable. Yeah. Uh, we're about at the one year, we're nine month mark, and I think it. I mean, does it feel like a different company to you? It it totally feels like a different company. I I don't remember. I have been following Cisco a long time, an era where there was this much product news coming out in this short a period of time. It seems like it, you know, as a Cisco watcher, it's hard for me to keep up. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's not just the product news. I think the uh, the big shift that's happened now, and it's uh, I, I don't think it's debated anymore. Is Cisco is the networking company for AI um, for AI workloads for both training and inference in the world. And we are in most of the major data center build outs. We're in, um, uh, we're in most of the data sovereign build outs. Um, and so what you're starting to see is um, whether it be in uh, connectivity and networking or it be in safety and security and trust for AI workloads, we are the company that's actually providing that infrastructure alongside with companies like NVIDIA and OpenAI and others. So like, I, th I think that's the exciting part. Uh, all right, G2, just hold on that thought of uh, AI and networking. I want to come back to that and Cisco's role in it. But uh, let's talk about next week. You've got this little event coming up, Cisco Live. You, me, 25,000 of our closest friends. Uh, it's going to be a big event given where we are in the AI era. Uh, what are your customers talking about? What are you expecting to hear from them at the show? Firstly, it's, uh, you know, registration numbers are looking really good. So without letting the cat out of the bag, I think um, this is going to be a big one. Um, I think what the customers are expecting of the show, and if I were to say the general sentiment is we are witnessing one of the most consequential shifts in um, the history of humanity, but also a very consequential shift that we're experiencing in AI. So we are moving from you know, chatbots that intelligently answered questions that people posed to a machine to now moving to agents that are going to go out and conduct tasks and jobs fully autonomously. And I think that shift is going to require a very different set of assumptions on the infrastructure that you need to have to power AI, the safety and security that you need to have to make sure that um, AI is operating in a trusted fashion. Um, and, um, the general level of dexterity that organizations are going to need to build out internally um, is um, is something that we can really we feel like we can really help with. So every announcement that we're making around data center build outs, around making sure that your workplaces are ready so that you can you can make the most of this new pattern of work, um, or the resilience that you're going to need in your infrastructure. Um, to ensure business continuity, to ensure the right level of um, um, safety and security um, is, is going to be around this kind of notion of how do we make sure that we get ready for the next era of AI, which is agentic AI. But that's the big area that we'll be announcing you know, stuff in. And, and I fully agree with you that I think this is the biggest shift uh, certainly I've seen in my career, maybe got to go back to the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I, you know, I think this is going to be bigger than the Internet. Now, the role of the network, and you touched on this, right? Um, I think it'll dwarf the internet at, at some point. Oh, I think it'll dwarf the internet, too. Uh, I, I think it, the, the way it democratizes access to expertise, it's going to create new economic models. Uh, but I want to I go back to the role of the network. And, um, uh, you know, I've been saying for quite a while that the network is critical uh, to AI success. Uh, I think uh, more people are starting to understand that now. And, uh, in fact, um, I saw in a, uh, a Q&A with... Uh, your CEO, Chuck Robbins, and NVIDIA CEO, Jensen Huang, he talked about how Cisco's got more domain knowledge than anybody in networking, which is not questionable. But why do you think Cisco is uniquely positioned 
to deliver the network for the AI era. You know, I think it's important to first talk about why is the network so important in the AI era? Because AI is power bound, it's, net, it's compute bound, it's data bound, and it's network bound, right? And what do I mean by it's bound by these things? That means there's a shortage, there are constraints in these areas which actually could hold back AI. So why is, why is I mean, the, the power is pretty obvious. We don't have enough power to fuel the GPUs in the world. Uh, and so you have to go and build data centers where there's power, right? That's pretty obvious. There's an inherent shortage of GPUs. We have more demand for GPUs than the number of GPUs that are out there and compute that's out there. Um, it's, it's data bound in the sense that we have run out of publicly available data to go out and you know, train these models. And so you need to make sure that you now have a different way to make sure that that happens. Um, enterprise data is probably, there's 150X amount of data in the enterprise than there was freely available on the public internet. And so there's gonna be more and more data that these models are gonna get trained with you know, from the enterprise. The network bound is really interesting. On the training side of the house, when you're doing a training run, it's extremely important that your packets don't get delayed getting to the GPU because idle time in the GPU is like burning money, right? Um, and uh, power efficiency of the movement of packets is also really important. So what the world needs is a low latency, high performance, extremely high power efficiency networking that can go out and ensure that intra GPU packet movement and intra-cluster packet movement can happen in very efficient ways, right? On the training side. On the inferencing side of the house, um, you're not only latency bound, but you're also memory bound. Because if you think about long form thinking, what used to be called test time compute in reasoning models, what you need to do in there is make sure that as these um, agents are talking to each other, what's gonna happen in the, in the future? You're gonna have multiple agents let's say you farm out a job that job is going to be given to four or five agents just like you would do with a human team of people right those agents will go out and start working they'll be communicating with each other they'll be exchanging data uh you'll need to make sure that that exchange of data is done in a secure you know manner with the identity being verified of the agents sometimes they'll disagree when they disagree they'll have to come to some kind of reconciliation and then provide the final recommendation to the orchestrator agent and that orchestrator agent might bring a human in the loop to say, do you agree with the recommendation that we're making? And then go ahead. All of that is not just network bound. It's also going to be memory bound. That's right. You're going to need to make sure that you actually, in these reasoning models, you have to save the state and then go back to the state in these agentic workflows. And so once again, network plays a very important role. Safety and security plays a very important role, making sure that these systems are trapped are trusted is super important. And so this is not like, oh, this is a nice thing to have. This is critical infrastructure for AI. And if you don't get this right, you don't get AI right. And that's where I think this gets to be super exciting for Cisco, but it's also super important because we can't get the full um, power of AI harnessed if you don't have the right infrastructure in place and you don't have the right safety and security and trust parameters in place. Yeah, and in fact, in uh, some of the discussions I've had with uh, uh, IT leaders and data scientists, um, early AI deployments were really self-contained systems, right? And I think now what we're seeing, in fact, some of the, the activities you've been in at a country level, we need to take what we've been doing in the small form factor devices and go big with it. And I think one of the unique things about Cisco is I've always said that uh, you know, when the adults get in the room, that's when Cisco comes in, right? You do big better than anybody. And so um, it's, you know, it's good to hear that you're so tightly aligned with uh, all the other vendors in this ecosystem. You know, as more nationalistic interests get to be more prominent, um, you know, who wins the AI race, wins the economic race, and wins the national security race? So this is not like, oh, this is a, this is an interesting next wave of technology that's, you know, you can take it or leave it. It's like, no, this is, this is central to national security. This is central to economic prosperity. 
And we will see every country wanting to make sure that they have some kind of presence of data centers uh, and they have some kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, kind of presence with AI. And when companies like Cisco partner with them, you're seeing American technologies getting utilized in all those areas, which is great for America and it's great for the world. So I think like there's a lot of strategic importance to this kind of, you know, global build out for data, for, um, you know, data center sovereignty, for uh, AI readiness and data center build outs for capacity, as well as for safety and security. Yeah, well, there's a lot of obviously economic impact here. Uh, but uh, let's let's pivot back to Cisco Live at a very high level. Obviously, I don't want you to give away the keynotes now and you know, any product news, but what, what can we expect to hear about next week? You should expect to hear probably, I, I would say, the most material innovations and announcements we have had during at least my tenure at Cisco. This was the moment that we've been building up to, you know, um, and so this will be the most consequential Cisco Live that I've had in my tenure, which is five years. But I, I can actually look back because I had done some look back on what, what, what had happened five or, five or ten years prior to my time. And I think this is probably the most consequential Cisco Live we've had at least in a decade. Um, and, and it'll be innovation in all of these areas we're talking about around AI ready data centers, around future proofing workplaces, around making sure that the infrastructure is digitally resilient um, and uh, doing that in a way that's safe and secure um, throughout the entire state. So like the, the, every announcement and every innovation we make is going to be around keeping in mind how organizations can be prepared to make the shift from a um, you know, interesting tool that used to be a chatbot that in intelligently answered your questions to now agents that are going to join the workforce and you uh, will have a, um, you know, kind of augmentation of billions of digital agents that will actually, you know, increase the throughput capacity of humanity uh, by at least an order of magnitude. So we have 8 billion people in the world. I think it's going to feel like the throughput capacity of 80 billion because of all these agents that will be augmented to the workforce. And I actually feel like most people who think, oh, am I going to lose my job from this? Actually, I think you're going to, there's going to be so much upside and creativity that will come out of this where people will be able to do things that they never could dream of solving as problems before that will happen now. Yeah, well, people said the same thing about the internet, right? It was going to take jobs, but on the back end, it created so many more jobs than we could have ever imagined. And so, um, you know, I agree with you on that. And but it, but it sounds like I think, uh, Gita, I don't put words in your mouth, but we're moving now from an era of a lot of AI vision, which is what we've had at Cisco Lives in the past, to really helping companies uh, deploy the infrastructure to make take that vision and make it reality. Is that a good way to think about it? That's absolutely. And it's um, the numbers are showing it now. Like in the last earnings call we had, we talked about the fact that we exceeded the, you know, billion dollar target we had on these AI workloads uh, ahead of schedule. Right. And so you're starting to see the um, the vision manifest into reality. And it's a super exciting time, but it's also a super important time to be cautious and not just uh, have rose colored glasses on because safety and security is going to be a big deal. And if you don't get that right, and if these systems aren't trusted, they're not going to get utilized effectively. And this is the first time, I think, in the history of security that you'll find that security is not an impediment to adoption, but is an accelerant to adoption. Where if you don't have the right level of safety and security in place, AI will not get adopted because people might be concerned about it. So I think we have to make sure that we're balancing those pieces. And so we have some really interesting, you know, kind of deep partnerships that we've had with companies like OpenAI, companies like NVIDIA, where we're building out secure AI factories and we're doing all of these pieces for exactly that reason, that we have to make sure that we propagate the adoption of AI, but that requires these underlying capabilities that are just made available. Yeah, well, the security aspect is something that it seems like the industry is almost glossed over from time to time. So it's good to see Cisco bring that up. But it does sound like that I think Cisco is really prepared now to be at the center of this agentic AI era 
and and help our customers get to it. So, uh, is there anything else you want to add before I let you go? No, I, look, I think uh, for for those that uh, get a chance to register, we are going to be um, in San Diego, um, and you should definitely try to attend the event. And if you can't attend the event for any reason, make sure that you catch us um, online. And um, this is going to be the most most consequential Cisco Live that we've had in a decade. And so you, you don't want to miss this one. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'll be there. G2 will be there. And uh, like I said, 25,000 of our closest friends will be there with us as well. That's so, right. That's right. Yeah. So on behalf of G2 Patel, uh, Chief Product Officer and President of Cisco, I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research. And thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time on my next episode of Zcast. Thanks for keeping